Hey family, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Cut Nice 50, and this is 101. If you're new to the channel, thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow. Today, man, we're going to be discussing a topic that I really wanted to talk about a little bit. It has to do with loyalty. It has to do with friendship. It has to do with some of the day-to-day -day problems that we may be experiencing, especially if you're a professional athlete, if you're a sponsored athlete, if you're into bodybuilding, but it has to, it can do with any kind of sports or any other activities when it comes to personal uh, goals that you're trying to achieve or you're trying to achieve success. So we're going to be featuring my guy, Samson Dada, who I'm a big fan of. I've been following his career since my guy, Mad Dog, started training them. Um, but he was always, I remember him coming up and his wife was training them, which they was a good duo, but he got to a certain level. Um, just with her, even though he had the drive, he had the physique, he had the potential. Um, and it has to do with a little bit of my guy, Hasso. Um, I was a big fan of his, man. When, before he started Hasso, I started my own nutrition company, um, Evolve Nutrition. Y'all can see that, you know, down below. Even though we're doing a little bit of restructuring now, you know, due to the pandemic and other issues, um, we're always going to be preaching positive energy. Um, it's a lot of great brands out there. It's a lot of our partners, especially at Live Good, that's preaching health and wellness and actually having um, quality supplements out there. So if you always have any questions, you can always reach out to us. We're still going to be about health and wellness. We're just doing things a little bit different, differently this year. Uh, we believe in balance. We believe in just speaking out. So we want to start talking a lot more. We want to start reaching a different atmosphere of people because it's, it's hard out there right now. I don't know if you know anything about the inflation rates up there. Um, so I feel for some of these bodybuilders. That's why you don't see them in too many of these shows because expenses have gone on, going up. They have their family to take care of. And generally, if they're traveling, you have to think about the cost for them bringing their family, their spots, sponsors, their camera crew or whoever they may have. Even though it's a choice, um, these issues still, it costs money. Um, to make these things happen. It's not just one person. Generally, people are working in as a team. So I just want y'all to be mindful of that. Um, and my other guy, who we're going to be just talking about is uh, his coach, um, Milos Sasha. And if y'all know anything about Milos, man, Milos is an amazing guy. He doesn't care if you're his athlete. Um, if you have amazing physique, if he think he, he can help you, he's going to do it. Um, and sometimes it's critical to him because his athletes may feel a certain way, but this guy just loves bodybuilding. Even though he's not coaching the other athletes, he can he will give them tips um, if he could. Because most of the time, just like myself, he gives his services away for free. He doesn't ask for anything else in return because he loves to do it. That's his passion. That's what he loved to do. He, and he spent half his lifetime on this planet committed to bodybuilding and helping others. So I just want y'all to know it's two different perceptions, it's two different sides of the story. But the breakup between Samson and Milos, it hurt me a little bit. Um, I already seen another guy who I used to follow when it was Coach Greg and my guy Johnny Shree um, breaking up. And they think he was close friends, best friends for like almost 15, 20 years or whatever the case may be. Um, Coach Greg was uh, his best man, his daughter's god dad. And after they broke up, it was a silly breakup, in my opinion, off of just somebody sharing their opinion and stuff like that. If y'all know him, then I read he got bigger and got to a different ram. But Johnny is more grounded and he wanted to, um, he had his own ideas um, to help educate others and help go a different light but, um, than Greg wanted to do. And it was like, like I said, if y'all knew that story, but that one kind of hurt me a little bit more. And I started looking at Greg and like I said, fame or money could change some people. Um, Greg has changed a little bit over the years. That's just my perception. Um, and he has got better in a lot of other things. But this is the world that we live in. Man. You can have loyal friends. You can have people in your lives who you spent and you done dedicated so much time and effort and they just don't appreciate you or they don't see things the way you see them. And that's that's okay. Um, but sometimes genuine people are genuine people. Um, I was hoping that they got me together, but uh, it just looks like to me, and maybe it's true or not, that Greg is going through a midlife crisis. He doesn't 
he's not even with his partner who he was with for 20 plus years. Um, I don't think they had any kids or anything. So he's saying he's happier than he ever been. And then you just see the comments he made at the honor about the bikini and smashing. It's just not a good look. And I know he can say whatever, but I've been in law enforcement over 25 years. And that's what we do is observe. We report, you know, you take notes. And if you know a guy, you've been watching him for years. And I've been following Greg since his powerlifting days because I've got a powerlifting background myself. So you you know when somebody is not being forthcoming, they're not being honest, they're not telling the truth, and they're actually in pain. And I think he's in pain. My guy, Johnny Shree, um, I done talked to him several times. He's hoping that they can get past this other, you know, whatever dilemma that they have. He didn't think he'd go that way, um, but he's giving Greg his his uh break. He's giving him everything he needs to do, and he just moved on, you know. But I know he's definitely in pain. It's hurting him. Um, you've been close to somebody for years and years, and they can just end a friendship or end a partnership for whatever reason. It don't matter if it's business. Johnny wanted to do his own thing. Greg started his business, um, but um, it's like two different people. Greg is one way. He's more, I guess, outgoing, um, to tell whatever comes to his mind, which could be detrimental at times. And Johnny is a little bit more educational. He's going to be more thoughtful when he uses his word to critique. But he's still going to tell you how it is. He's going to tell you what you, um, I guess, what Greg said. I'm going to tell you what you want to hear, not what you need to hear and stuff like that. But John and Shree believes in iron sharpened iron. And I like this guy right here. And I still want to Johnny. I still uh, support this guy, man. I done bought some of his apparel. Y'all know he does coaching and everything else like that. So just give him a shout out. But it's sad to see these great uh, relationships that end up becoming public. You've been seeing people for years and years. And the hardships of the world um, start bringing them down. Um, and I myself believe in balance. I think everything is connected, whether you in bodybuilding, fitness, your day to day life, you have children, um, everything is connected and it does affect you. Stuff you watch on TV does affect you. If you're not in a positive atmosphere, you don't have positive people around you that can affect your mental health. And y'all know anything about bodybuilding. These guys go through a lot of mental struggles and physical because of the training, but also because if they're enhanced athletes, it does change up their hormones and things of that nature. They may get sensitive, they may get aggressive, um, but that's a different ball game. But my guy, I don't think maybe a little of that had to do with my guy Samson and Milos breaking up. But like I said, that one hurt before because my guy Mad Dog, he was putting everything into him. And then, you know, Samson has went through a lot these last couple of years. It's a quick rise of fame, but he's still shocking himself with the potential that he has. He never probably thought he can be Mr. Olympia. Um, Mad Dog started training him, and then he was just lost. You know, he just got stuck in a hotel, I think, for a month um, during the pandemic. Track Couldn't train, couldn't do nothing like this, using bands. So his story is unique. So I'm always supporting him. But this situation, even though I support him, I think it was still handled wrong when it comes to Milos in the public eye. Because, you know, I think Samson doesn't recognize he's a public figure now. He's used to doing things, you know, a certain way and keeping it nice and quiet. Um, but when you are competing, certain things you don't want to speak out about for whatever reason, because you're sensitive, um, you're low calories, you have, you know, your mindset is not the best and you've been in prep for so long. Uh, but Milos is Milos. You know, he didn't say anything about it. Whether who's right or wrong, that doesn't even matter. It's the matter that this relationship that one thought it was family. And I think Samson thought it was family too, but I'm guessing the pressure from the world got to him. Thinking you can be Mr. Olympia if you only can get in shape. And he's on hurry just for the last couple of years. Um, even though he has a quick rise, he's one of the best in the world. Number three, um, just to get to be number one, it's a lot of other pressure and, and it could be financial benefit comes along with it. So if you're hearing this over and over and over and you're thinking Milos is doing something wrong or you're thinking, you know, it's just, it's a 
sensitive topic because his wife was coaching him, Milos was coaching him, and they were a team, but he was used to listen to his wife a lot when it comes to prepping him because she got him into the sport. So she prepped him pretty much his whole career. So she knows his body in and out. But when you have an expert who's been doing it longer than any of them, sometimes you have to step back, I think, in my position. I mean, just let him do what he has to do. And you can always uh, leave, you know, uh, share your opinion. But this guy has dedicated his life to bodybuilding. Um, and, you know, most of the time he doesn't miss. So who knows what was going on um, with the situation when uh, Samson said he, his wife prepped him for this and Milos didn't prep him. Whatever the case may be, he didn't give Milos no life. I don't think he meant it in that way even though it was perceived to the masses that his wife prepped him for a couple of shows and he came in great shape and Milos didn't do anything. So, you know, Milos got a lot of backlash for that, which I think Samson should have corrected kind of immediately um, right after the show. I know he had the uh, Arnold and stuff like that and then you in a relationship or you in a coaching arrangement right after. It's just not a good, a good look. It doesn't look professional. Even though I'm a big supporter of Samson, it just doesn't look good for somebody who you claim to be your family. Um, even though Milos couldn't be there in person, you know, for a lot of his shows and stuff like that, because he's all around the world. He has other things going on, but he's there um, either by phone or, you know, whatever the case is up and down. And when he can be there, he is on there. He's better hands on, of course. Um, but he does have other athletes. And I think Samson, um, at his point, he needs somebody who's more hands-on, like his wife, who's right there. But I'm thinking that it still may be a conflict with whatever coach he end up deciding, unless he just chooses to ride or die with his wife and let her do it. I mean, he'd have made the progress. Now it's just about getting sharp, getting more conditioned, and see where that happens. But that doesn't negate the fact that Mad Dog got him there. Milos got him there. And that t tag team duo got him to the success level. It's just sometimes the world gives you too much pressure that you just don't know how to handle it. Um, and you feel like you need a change. Um, but it's just a different perception when you look at things. You're number three in the world. If you keep pushing and pushing, the more muscle, the more training, the more density, your body will respond and you will get more sharper. You know, I don't even think that Olympia looks was his best because of how long the shows has been the last couple of years. Milos did his job. Samson did his job. The whole team did their job. I don't even blame them for not being in condition. His body just needs a lot of work. And the weight, I think it hurts him a lot, just like it hurt my guy, Brandon Curry. He wasn't at his best, even though he was bigger and he always struggled with conditioning. So some guys, I just think it's up to timing. If you're waiting, you know, eight, 12 hours and you can't eat, you're at the show and, you know, the Olympia is just a long show. It's not like they go straight on like some of these smaller shows. Um, and you can see it. Um, Samson came in sharper to some of the smaller shows because the wait is not that long. But that's just my perception. Share your thoughts. Let me know what you think. Um, it's no right or wrong in this situation. It's just a sad thing. You see great friendships great partnerships in because you have goals that you want to achieve and you're trying to achieve success that you never thought you could. Um, and so it's just, it's no right or wrong way, um, but it could be a better way to handle it. It's my wish that I hope that Samson does reach out to Milos. They do men, whatever relationship they have, because they are family. You can see the love in each other's eyes. You can see it. Even if disrespect to whatever happened, it's not, you can repair those situations. In other words, it's too short. You don't meet genuine people. And Samson is one of the most loyal people I know, just like Milos. But that doesn't mean they don't see eye to eye on everything. Um, you know, Milos probably loved him too much as a brother or son and didn't push him the way he probably thought he needed to um, because Samson had his own personal limits. But that can be the only downfall when mixing friendship and family into business. Uh, but I do think they will 
end up talking and we'll get back together. It's just going to be a little bit of time and hopefully they do it not in the public eye, but they are both public figures. I wish them the best of luck. I wish them nothing but love and success. And I'm pretty sure that Samson will continue to grind hard. He will continue to be the best of the best out there. But y'all share your thoughts. Let me know what you think, man. What struggles out there are you dealing with? Have you had something similar happening to you while you're trying to reach your goals or you're trying to reach success or you're trying to accomplish something that nobody else sees but you? You know, this is your journey. This is your life. But you got to have positive people around you. You got to never give up. You got to keep striving to be the best that you can be. But thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow. Welcome to 101. We'll cut next week. With that, we out. Thank you.